Well, cool. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look at solving this by completing the square. And when completing the square, we make sure we're solving. We want to set this equal to 0. And there's a couple important points when completing the square that we want to make sure we're aware of. First of all, we need to make sure that our a in our equation is going to be equal to a positive 1. Then what we're going to do is we're going to want to put parentheses around our quadratic and our linear term. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a perfect square trinomial. And remember, a perfect square trinomial is in the form of uh, x squared plus 2 times the square root of cx plus c. Now, usually you know, we say, well, what happened to ax squared plus bx plus c? Well, that stuff is all great as well. Um, and you could still even say we have an a. You could have an a. But what we're doing is ma mainly looking at when our a is going to be equal to 1. So we're going to want a is equal to 1. We need c to be a square number so we can take the square root of it. And if we can multiply by 2 and, and that's your b, then we have a perfect square trinomial. So I need to create a perfect square trinomial. Now notice, if this is a perfect square trinomial, this number has been multiplied by 2 and then taken the square root. So what I'm going to do to create my perfect square trinomial is I'm going to do the exact opposite operations. I'm now going to take my b, divide it by 2, and then square it, pretty much undoing all of this to find the value of c that's going to complete the square. So to do that, I take negative b divided by 2 and square it. Well, negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3 squared, which equals a positive 9. Now I'm going to take that value and I'm going to add it inside my parentheses to now create my perfect square trinomial. 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 18. So what you can see now is now I have a perfect square trinomial where my c is, the, is, um, is a square number. And then my b is 2 times the square root of c. And it has to be negative, but that's OK. It can be positive or negative. Now, the important thing is since I added a 9 to create this, I need to make sure I add a 9 on the other side. Whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to make sure you do on the other side of the equation to keep equivalent equations. Um, however, you could add and subtract on the same side. And we do that often. And I'll show some examples when I do that. Um, but I think it's probably the easiest to understand. Whenever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So now I have 9 equals. Now the important thing, why do we have a perfect square trinomial? Why do we even deal with that perfect square trinomial? Well, we do that is because a perfect square trinomial is very, very easily factored. So now what we can simply do is say, all right, my perfect square trinomial is simply going to be x plus or minus the square root of c. It's either going to be both positive or both negative, depending on your middle term. In this case, my, term is po my middle term is positive, so it's going to be x plus c. In this case, my middle term is negative, so it's going to be x minus the square root of c, which is 3. All right, so that is my binomial or my trinomial um, factored into a binomial squared which now is in this form, which is good, because now what I can do is apply my inverse operations. So therefore, I'll have a negative 9 equals x minus 3 squared. Now I can apply um, my inverse operations. So I'll take the square root, take the square root. So therefore, remember, whenever you take the square root, you have to um, introduce a positive and a negative. And then also the square root, when we're taking the square root of a negative number, we can rewrite that as a square root of 9 times the negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 we write as i. And the square root of 9 is going to be plus or minus 3. So therefore, I have plus or minus 3i equals x minus 3. Add 3 to the other side. And therefore, my final answer is x equals 3 plus or minus 3i. I don't know my eyes are a little crazy, but hopefully you guys get, uh, get the answer and understand. Um, thanks so much. That's how, you, that's how you solve using completing the square. Thanks.